So it's been more than 6 weeks that we published our impressions video of the POCO X3 Pro where we said that this well could be the true successor of the POCO F1. And since then, one of our team members who is an avid gamer has been using it as his gaming rig. So allow me to start with the performance side of things first. It is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 860, which is pretty much the exact same as the two-year-old flagship Snapdragon 855 Plus. With this, the experience with the POCO X3 Pro is spectacular. Apps install and load quite fast, and juggling through multiple apps at a time is also no hiccup here. But with an unoptimized MIUI, you will notice some certain heavy apps or games reloading almost all the time. And despite featuring a 120Hz refresh rate screen, we could still notice micro lags every now and then, especially when scrolling through the UI rather fast. This happened on the POCO X3 NFC 2 and we assumed it was because of the relatively underpowered Snapdragon 732G chipset, but this deja vu makes us shift the blame towards the screen itself or the software optimization instead. It's probably the former though. Nevertheless, let's talk about its gaming performance now. We extensively tested its gaming performance and to be more accurate, we even gave it to some of our gaming enthusiast colleagues to check if our findings corroborate. So it's safe to say that this phone has undergone a lot of gaming tests. Okay, about the results, well, our experience was the same. We played Genshin Impact on its highest settings with 60 FPS. Unfortunately, the phone's cooling solution simply could not catch up under this. We graphed its initial CPU and battery temperatures at 34 and 31 degrees Celsius, which quickly rose to 68 and 45 degrees Celsius respectively just after 5 minutes of gameplay. To further push Snapdragon 860's limit, we continued playing it for a little over 40 minutes, where we recorded POCO X3 Pro's maximum CPU and battery temperature at 76 and 46 degrees Celsius respectively. The handrest area here got uncomfortably hot, whereas the camera module was even hotter. Gameplay in the setting, on the other hand, is fairly smooth with a stable 60fps most of the time, but there were minor stutters every now and then. Then we dialed down the settings to high graphics and 30fps. Here the gameplay got significantly better, especially in the thermal department. After 20 minutes, the CPU and battery temperature rose to 63 degrees Celsius and 41 degrees Celsius respectively, while the gameplay was relatively smoother as well. The camera module still got pretty hot, but not as much as when playing at the highest settings. Likewise, comparatively less demanding titles like Call of Duty Mobile run extremely well at their max setting. We set the graphics to very high and frame rate to max while also turning on anti-aliasing. Under this, the gameplay was buttery smooth, although the temperature got a little out of hand than we had anticipated. Now, PUBG Mobile can hit HDR graphics and extreme frame rates, or Ultra HD graphics and Ultra frame rates. Under both the settings, the gameplay is fairly smooth while we noticed few stutters after around 20 minutes into the game. Finally, Shadowgun Wargames, which is a 120fps optimized title, runs smoothly under ultra high graphics and 120fps. All in all, POCO X3 Pro's gaming performance is really impressive, although its thermal solution struggles when pushing through graphics-intensive titles. The company says that it has used multi-layer graphite heat dissipating material, but from our experience, that seems simply insufficient. But keeping the heating aside, the phone's gaming performance is only a little short of flagship level. I just hope that the company brings about updates to gradually remedy the heating issues. The battery life is also very good on this phone. It packs a 5160mAh battery and on a typical usage, it will provide you 6-7 to seven hours of screen on time. If you continuously play games, you should get around 3-3.5 three to three and a half hours of screen on time, which from a gamer's perspective is considered a decent gaming session. Plus, the 33W charger that you get inside the box charges the battery pretty fast, which is 0-100% to in about an hour. Okay, about the design and build, well, the POCO X3 Pro isn't a stranger to the eyes. In fact, it bears the same visual aesthetics, uh, form factor, and everything else as the POCO X3 NFC. So yeah, nothing spectacular. It weighs 215 grams with a 9.4mm thickness and is definitely not for those who prefer a compact device. Although you will get used to the build quality after some time, holding the phone for a rather long duration is subject to pain in the hands. The weight distribution is also questionable here as the lower half of the phone feels relatively heavier than the upper half. 
Anyhow, you do get an IP53 certification against dust and splashes here, but it's not very surprising because even cheaper Xiaomi phones these days come with this feature. But what I've really liked is that they have given a Gorilla Glass 6 protection on the display, which is great. And as with most Xiaomi phones these days, the Poco X3 Pro also has a power button on the side that doubles as a fingerprint sensor. It is easy to reach and unlocks the phone in a flash, unless your finger is sweaty or a little wet, that is. As for the display, apart from the micro lags, we've had no issues regarding the touch response or the actual quality of this IPS panel. Its viewing angles are pretty nice and colors pop fairly well, although a little muted if you compare it with the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max. It is also HDR10 compliant, but weirdly enough, the screen automatically evolves with a yellow tint when watching HDR videos on YouTube. Unfortunately, we are yet to receive an update addressing that very issue. Moreover, the display does not get very bright. With 450 nits of typical brightness, that Poco says can get even higher with sunlight mode turned on, but you will find a bit of a struggle when looking at the phone under direct sunlight. On the other hand, it can get quite dim and therefore using the phone under the sheets will be a comfortable experience. There's also a notification LED right above the display. While I wished it was RGB LED rather than plain white, the mere inclusion of this notification indicator is a win, if you ask me. Moving on, Poco X3 Pro stereo speakers can get plenty loud too and the mids and highs sound pretty well balanced too. For gamers, bass is really important and unfortunately the bass reproduction here is almost non-existent. So while playing games, we had to rely on headphones instead. Okay, camera-wise, the Poco X3 Pro surprisingly has a downgraded setup compared to the Poco X3 NFC. Here you get a 48 megapixel primary and an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle sensor compared to the 64 megapixel and 13 megapixel lens respectively on its predecessor. Besides this, the Poco X3 Pro brings the same 2 megapixel depth and 2 megapixel macro lenses. For this review, we compared its cameras against the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max that has a 108 megapixel primary sensor. And after all the testing we did, what we can definitely say is that the Poco X3 Pro's cameras are strictly average. In almost all instances, we found the Note 10 Pro Max producing better output. Starting from the normal images, the Note 10 Pro Max has better sharpness, details, and dynamic range. In terms of colors, well, both phones have a tendency to oversaturate, but the Poco X3 Pro does it even more. There's a noticeable color shift when switching to the ultra wide angle mode on the Poco X3 Pro. Here, the saturation has been dialed down to a relatively natural level and the highlights are improved too. But compared to the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max, it misses out on finer details and looks a bit grainy and over sharpened. Okay, about the portraits, well, both cameras are inconsistent and frankly, both need rework in terms of subject's color tone. Poco X3 Pro's subject look dark, they look excessively sharp with an unnatural red tint, while the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max makes the subjects look pale and adds highlights. Though not perfect, Note 10 Pro Max does a better job in most instances. Macro images are also significantly better on the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max. As you can see, macro shots from the Note 10 Pro Max retain better details, albeit with a wild boost in saturation. Now coming to the selfies, once again, subjects look over sharpened on the Poco X3 Pro with low black levels and boosted saturation. It also tends to have a soft yellowish tint. Selfies from the Note 10 Pro Max look even softer with muted colors, while highlights are a little overblown here. Portrait selfies share a similar story, whereas the X3 Pro thankfully turns out brighter looking photos. In most occasions, edge detection is better on the Poco X3 Pro. Now getting to the low light photos, images pop in terms of color on the Note 10 Pro Max and therefore look livelier. It also retains better details with less noise, while nighttime images from the X3 Pro tend to have better sky details in some instances. Turning on night mode, the X3 Pro delivers better highlights and more details while also looking over sharpened, whereas night mode photos from the Note 10 Pro Max look brighter, have better shadow details and dynamic range. You can also shoot low light photos from the ultra wide angle lens on the Poco X3 Pro, but the photos look too soft with little detail preservation. Night mode does help a bit in controlling the exposure, but it's nothing to write home about. For videos, you can shoot up to 4K 30fps videos from both the phones and in this resolution, I found that the X3 Pro wins out with relatively better stabilization. 
Additionally, the 1080p 60fps footages are slightly more stable on the X3 Pro as well. 1080p 30fps videos are neck to neck in terms of stabilization from both the phones, while the Note 10 Pro Max has worse exposure control. Hi everyone, this is a selfie video from the POCO X3 Pro. Apparently, you can only take 1080p 30fps videos from this phone. Uh, in terms of quality, well, the videos are stable enough, but there's this red tint on the subject that you can also notice in selfies and portraits taken from this phone. Um, apart from that, uh, the field of view is not very wide. You have to stretch your hands all the way like this to fit yourself. So that's there. Uh, in terms of the audio quality from the microphone, well, it's average just like any other mid-range phone. We also installed Gcam mod on the POCO X3 Pro to see if it would bring any improvement. Luckily, it does. Normal images enjoy balanced saturation, well-managed highlights, and even better dynamic range in most instances. Selfie photos look more natural from Gcam too. Wrapping it all up, the POCO X3 Pro is an excellent gaming phone for its price. No doubts on that. Its stellar Snapdragon 860 chipset will handle almost everything you throw at it. So if you are a mobile gamer and are looking for a mid-range phone that can push through the most demanding titles, then this is the one to get. However, it is priced the exact same as the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max that excels in the areas where the POCO X3 Pro struggles. The Note 10 Pro Max brings an AMOLED screen, better looking and ergonomic design, plus way superior camera performance. So if your priority is not gaming, rather an overall all-round phone, then skip the POCO X3 Pro and get the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max instead. About the POCO X3 Pro, well, it is the only mid-range gaming phone that you can buy right now, and I am actually surprised that none of the other smartphone brands have actually thought about what POCO has achieved with the X3 Pro. So that was all for our in-depth review of the POCO X3 Pro. Do let me know in the comments which one would you pick, the POCO X3 Pro or the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max, or you would go for any other smartphone instead. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and stay positive.